Hello everyone, this is Maggie. I'm so thrilled to be able to offer this tour to you all of River House. We are over the moon to finally uh, see this project completed, to start occupying the space, but it will not truly be our home until we can welcome all of you into it as well. Um, and until that day, we wanted to offer just a little sneak peek into the building to talk with the architect about some of the amazing green features of this building, as well as some of the programs we'll be um, launching from it. I want to give a special thank, out, thank you to the New York City Parks Department, who's been our long-term partner on the restoration of the Bronx River, the development of the Bronx River Greenway, this connected series of parks and trails along the full 23 mile, miles of the river. And New York City Parks has also been our huge partner and leader on this building as well. River House is a New York City Parks Department building. Um, also want to thank Congressman Serrano who's been a long-term champion of the river for so many years, really saw the potential of the river when really nobody else did and who allocated uh, funds to this project as well as Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., the whole borough delegation to the New York City Council and former council member Annabelle Palma. Thank you to all of you. Without you, this project would not have been possible. And I also want to thank all the donors to the campaign for River House. This is a special fund we are establishing to enable the Bronx River Alliance to launch a whole new series of programs out of this building, environmental education programs, um, community science programs, voting programs, many, many exciting things that have not been available to Bronx communities for so long. So thank you so much to all of our donors. If you are interested in becoming a donor, we would welcome you to join us. Um, and you can just email me at, bron at sorry, maggie.greenfield at bronxriver.org. Okay, now on to the tour. Hello everyone. We are here on the Bronx River. I'm here with Greg Kish, our architect for River House, our beautiful building right there. And I'm just going to turn around for me for a second. Hi, I'm Maggie Greenfield. I'm the executive director of the Bronx River Alliance. Um, we are super, super thrilled that we are now in River House. It is finally done. Um, but of course, we only have really very bare bones staff um, in the building right now. And we can't welcome you all into the space. So we wanted to kind of bring the space to you and give you a little virtual tour. So uh, here we are. I'm going to turn it over to Greg here for a second. He's going to have his mask up. So I'm going to pull my mask up too. We are, of course, practicing appropriate social distancing and all those things. There goes the train, the El Cello line. Okay, but... Hi everybody. I, I hope you can hear me through the mask. You know, I mean, I'm really, I'm really thrilled that Maggie and her crew are in here finally. Um, and uh, it's this is not the way we expected to move in, but then again, that's the way everything is these days. So um, while we're out here, maybe I'll say a few things about the the site generally where the building sits. So we're standing on this brand new bridge over the Bronx River. And this bridge uh, sits at uh, a kind of critical spot in the river because this is the sort of upstream end of the, of the industrial part of the river. This is what was navigable. And you can see that there's kind of a turnaround area and there's a little dam here, a weir. So at uh, low tide like now, uh, clearly you could not bring a boat any farther upstream. So the river changes really dramatically from, from here where it's all industry down to the, uh, to the East River. And upstream it becomes this really beautiful naturalistic river. So when we sited the building here, we wanted to take advantage of this kind of dualistic uh, nature of the site. So the building has a kind of a working part for the Bronx River Alliance, the crew, the staff, and then it has a public part, which are like the classrooms, multi-purpose rooms, and so on. And so we orient the working part towards the uh, commercial river where you have the boat launches and so on, and the public part faces the natural river, um, where we have this plaza where events can be had uh, overlooking this part. Great. Can folks just let us know if you can hear us? If someone could just make a comment and let us know that you are hearing us with our masks on. It'd be great to know that. 
Yeah, we got we got ambient noise. You know, we have the train, the Amtrak <laughs> train line over here, and we have trucks on the rebuilt Sheridan Expressway. This whole site has changed dramatically since we started uh, working on this project. You know, none of this, the Sheridan Boulevard was not here, it was a highway. This bridge wasn't here. So this whole area is really transforming in an amazing way that's going to make it much more accessible to the public and make this building work a lot better. Absolutely. And just a quick shout out here across this bridge. We have the phase two of Starlight Park under construction. So um, that will be our, our link along the greenway that will take us down to Concrete Plan Park and should be done in a couple years. We'll talk about that more another day. Today we're going to focus on the building. Okay. So I guess from here you can, um, you can see one kind of uh, obviously unusual uh, aspect of this building, which is it has this sort of double layer wall system. You know, the outer layer is a metal mesh fence, which serves as a security fence. You know, at night you can pull, put all the gates down and lock it up so it's very secure. But there's another reason uh, for this as well. And uh, the, the idea that behind all this is since this building sits in a park, we wanted to make the building itself work like a um, ecological part of the park. So we have, um, the idea is that in a forest, you have um, layers of leaves and so on from the topmost leaves of the trees down to the mid-story. And then at the bottom, you have ferns and mosses. So what we tried to do here was take that idea of layers. Okay. So Greg, I think people are having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Oh, really? I think people can hear me, but not you right. quite as well. You know what? So we're I'll, still going to try to practice social distancing. I'm gonna all right. But, I'm uh, take this down. Oh, okay. Is that any better? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so as I was saying, in a, in a forest you have like horizontal layers of leaves and different types of vegetation. For this building, we took that idea, turned it on its side, and wrapped it around the building. So what we want to have eventually, when all the leaves have grown up, is vines on the outside growing all over this metal fence, so it'll be completely covered in vines. And then on the inner wall, which is really the the actual building wall, we want to have moss growing. And between the two, what we want to do is create a um, favorable microclimate around the building. So it's as if you would be in a forest. So in the summer, it'll be a little bit cooler. It'll have uh, better air quality, uh, less energy required for air conditioning and that kind of thing. So we have one question from Michelle Brody who wanted to know, Greg, if you are the same architects that did the waste transfer station on the East River oh. by Pier 36. No, 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 I'm not. Uh, we, did, we did one similar project on the river, on the East River at Bushwick Inlet Park, which uh, has yeah. a lot of similar features, but no, not that one. Okay. Keep the questions coming, guys. Okay, so why don't we head over to the plaza area and check out some of those vines you were talking about, Greg, and some of the moss, as well as the, uh, the feature that will help us take care of the vines and the moss. Right. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so... Um, so all of this, uh, this, this double layer living wall system here um, is, needs to be irrigated uh, to really grow very well and healthily and also in the summer to be able to maintain a cooler temperature around the building. So, um, but we don't want to use city water for that purpose because, you know, city water is a precious commodity in many parts of the world. and. We get plenty of rainwater here in New York. So what we do is all of this irrigation is fed by rainwater. So we collect all the water that falls on the roof, on the hard surfaces around the building, and it comes and gets stored in a 10,000 gallon tank, which sits right under this plaza. You can see those uh, manhole covers are access to that 10,000 gallon rainwater tank. It's full right now. It was very rainy yesterday. And so we use that water to irrigate the walls plus the uh, the regular uh, landscape that's around the building. So you can actually see a little bit of um, uh, water dripping down the wall in the background. So that's the inner layer, right? So on the outside we have the vines, which you can see just beginning to get some green leaves on some of them. Uh, some of them are don't yet have leaves out. This is early in the year, but they all Really yeah, leafy and it'll take a few years till it gets covered properly. It's so exciting to be here over the past few weeks and just see the greenery really coming out on the 
screen. So we have one question from Liz, my aunt Liz uh, in uh, Boston. She wanted to know if the double layer of vines and moss is a feature that you invented, Greg. Um, well, kind of. I mean, I'm not aware that, that anybody has done this quite in this way before. I mean, you can see there's plenty of cases where you have vines on buildings and so on, but, but this is really, you know, System that we worked with uh, originally Paul Mankiewicz, a biologist, and others to try to really um, make it work for us in a in a very sort of specific way. So uh, we know that we can have um, the vines uh, covering the outer layer of the uh, of the screen, and those are uh, deciduous vines, so that the the leaves turn color. They turn they're green in the summer. They turn red in the fall, and the leaves drop off in the winter. So we can get sun on the building when we want it. The inner layer with the mosses. This is really has never been done this way, and we've been working here. Let's come look at it. Yeah, we've been working with a company in Pennsylvania called Moss Acres, who um, have developed this system. And this is still very experimental. So we are going to be working with Moss Acres to uh, upgrade this to uh, something that um, is, uh, it probably works even better in the uh, vertical alignment. But you can see here what it looks like. We just took the, um, we just turned the irrigation on today uh, because it's off in the winter. And so the moss naturally gets dry and brown over the winter and it's going to come back as the irrigation um, uh, runs from now on through the summer. Great. And tell us about the two different styles of installing the moss, right? We had one style where they, uh, and we're going to try a different style in a little bit, right? Part of the, uh, part of the develop, the research and development aspect that, uh, moss acres, uh, originally was growing the moss directly onto a recycled felt mat, which is what is behind here. And um, when we installed this, they decided instead to use a different uh, system where they actually took moss that was pre-grown and they glue it to the mat. So that's what you see here. Now, going forward, when we add to this, um, we are we are going to go back to sort of version 2.0 of the actually grown in place moss. So it's something that we we think and Moss Acres thinks will be a little bit more reliable in terms of adhering to the um, uh, the felt backing and uh, and just generally durable. So this is you know this is the most um, experimental part of the building. We always <laughs> knew it was, but. You know, with these guys, Bronx River Alliance, they do, they're very hands-on. This is the kind of thing that I think uh, yes. they'll Yes, we've gotten slightly obsessed with moss, Thank haven't we, guys. Greg? I actually mailed Greg a, yes. a book about moss. I just finished oh, it. Did you? I haven't finished it yet. Oh, it's Don't great. give it away. Don't give away the ending. All right. <laughs> All right, should we go on in the building? Yeah, let's go. Okay. So this is the front door. Um, okay, so Jordan had a question about uh, the roof. So we'll get a little bit later, right, Jordan? I mean, Greg, or do you want to yeah, talk about the roof now? Well, yeah, I think maybe at the end when we step okay. outside so you can see it, but just, yeah. just as, a, as a sort of preview, the building is, this is a very, very high performance green building, and it's going to be a more or less zero energy building. It has solar panels on the roof, and it has ground source heat pumps. It has some very um, advanced efficient systems to make sure that it's going to make all of its own energy on site. So we'll get back to that when we can sort of step back and see the solar panel. Okay, great. Now, Jordan, another Jordan, wanted to know if there's things to do or see inside the building. Well, that's a timely question. Let's go inside. Come on. <laughs> we just, the vestibule we pass through is going to have a, a nice map of the whole river, which is not installed yet, you know, that just moved in. So we're now in the uh, lobby area, which connects the kind of public elements of the program. So there's a um, uh, classroom to my right and uh, to the- Awaiting students and educators. Shout out to all of our students and educators. We wanted you guys to come here, be no, in this room. Why don't we, let's, let's, let's go, go in for a second. I started kind of unpacking some books. I got kind of excited. Amber and Michelle, sorry, I know this is your space, but I couldn't help myself. So I started putting out some of our, some of our naturalist stuff, these kind of cool track finder books. I didn't even know we had those. 
Um, lots of books about the river and nature, some of our old historic plans, some of the books about the Bronx. So we really do envision this to be a space of learning about the Bronx, uh, about the river, about our natural systems. Um, and we look forward to being able to bring, you know, kids here, grab a sample out there on the river, bring it in, look at the water under a microscope and see what we can learn from it. So you know, while we're in here, maybe um, tilt up and show the, the, the roof. So one thing that was important to us in this building is that partly for energy efficiency and partly for the psychological value of daylight, we have these roof monitors everywhere in the building. So there is um, the, there's the sloping part that has the solar panel south, and then the vertical part, which faces north, has uh, windows in it. So we get daylight, and uh, some of those are openable. Uh, yep. They're motorized, so you can have a better natural ventilation. Yes. When it gets hot in here, yeah. which it is today. We actually opened them on the other side. I hear Mitchell the dog. <laughs> Mitchell the dog. We'll go see Mitchell the dog in a minute. Yeah, let's peek our heads in here in the boathouse that has boats in it. Imagine that. Yeah, today is the first day I've seen boats in here, so this has been a long time coming. Yeah, including some of our new canoes. I just noticed that. We have our new brand new boats awaiting paddlers oh, yeah. so we can't yeah we can't wait for everyone to come back out so we can take these boats out on the water with you so why don't we let's see we can show like, from here i guess we can see um the rainwater system so if you remember in uh, there's this 10,000 gallon tank that's rainwater in it under that plaza out there this is sort of the brain and heart of it here so this is the system that controls it it's very elaborately programmed and these pumps circulate the rainwater and they do a number of things like when we need rainwater for irrigation or other purposes or toilet flushing or boat washing um, it the pumps pump it up to an appropriate pressure and deliver it where it's needed uh, they also circulate the water through the rainwater tank twice a day and there's a uh, ultraviolet filter and physical filters yeah. to make sure that the water is always clean and safe in that tank so there's a that lot there i think is our ultraviolet filter yeah, right that's yep. the, yeah that's the uv filter that kills bacteria and so on and then these are other filters here and these are the pumps and yeah know, uh, and these are the bollards that we place there so we don't yeah. <laughs> back into them yeah. <laughs> Steve, we want you to come boating too. Come boating with us. Mitch, Sam, I'll show you Mitchell in just a minute. That's my son, he wants to see the dog. So over in that corner is the controller for the irrigation. And I suppose if you step out here, um, you can just sort of point out that for now, we have moss only on that um, uh, sort of east facing wall where you first come into the building. And that was done deliberately as part of this kind of experimental development. So when we get the moss right, hopefully we'll in install it everywhere on the building. And that's when we should see when the, the vines are grown and the moss is everywhere, we should really see the benefits of, of the microclimate we'll create around the building. But you can see the kind of um, shingle walls here have uh, drip irrigation lines under every shingle. So, uh, and that's installed all the way around the building. So we're ready for the moss when it's, uh, when it's, when ready. it's ready for us. <laughs> all right, should we go through the office yeah. space real quick? Okay. Let's go in through the crew locker room. So we have a conservation crew that's our heroes out on the river every day. And they are out on the river even during this pandemic because our parks are open and our river needs to stay clean and green and beautiful for the people who need to get out and enjoy it, get out of their apartments. There's one of our heroes, Miguel. Thanks, Miguel, for all your hard work. <laughs> uh, and then this is the crew locker room where the crew comes. They can throw their stuff in their locker. They can change their clothes if they get dirty. And one of the features that our staff is most excited about, this is the bathroom, but in the bathroom, we have a shower. So, you know, occasionally people get a little muddy and dirty out there and they want to shower off. So, area, yes. Right okay. So guys, I hope the connection is okay in here. I've noticed I'm on my iPhone and I've noticed we don't have great iPhone reception in here. 
Uh, so maybe we'll just kind of quickly pass through the office space. Oh, <laughs> that's where Mitchell's been busy. Mitchell. Oh, have you been a little bit busy over here? We'll come back and see you in a minute. There's Mitchell. Mitchell the dog, he's our guard dog. Yeah, about 20 people. We have also intern desks, so sort of smaller desks here. And uh, we, most of our staff hasn't been able to come and set up their spaces yet. So that's why we have a lot of empty desks, but we've been putting up some of our awards throughout the years up here on the cabinets and some of our old pictures from the golden ball and uh, past activities. So we are definitely excited for when we can have our full staff in the space. Point out oh, yeah. one, one feature of the uh, outer screen wall that you know, as as we've been saying, it's going to take a few years for the vines to really cover it. But what we want to do is is always provide some view out of here, uh, even when the vines are completely thick in the summer. So if you see the the mesh size, most of the mesh is a one inch mesh, so it's the smaller um, grid. But then some we have some panels where it's a bigger size mesh, and the idea right. and those kind so of this one here, bigger one out forward. Yep. And the idea is that those will always be clear. Maggie and her team will have to keep it clear of vines, uh -huh. so it's always like a view out even when we have thick leaves everywhere else. Right, so this, this smaller mesh one will be all covered with vines eventually, but we'll leave this one open so we can see out and people can see in. And yes, I see Alexi is with us on the, on the video. Alexi, it's so wonderful to have you with us. Come and see the building sometime. Alexi was one of our founders oh, yeah. and uh, the leader of Youth Ministries for Peace and Justice and our first chair, so. Oh, well. Come back, Alexi. This is the fruits of your labor right here. Oh, so Gail wanted to know who did our interior decorating. <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> um, the layout and the furnishings. So we did get, um, thanks to council member Annabelle Palma, she gave us funding to purchase the furnishings and we got them through the city, through the DCAS. And they are Herman Miller? nice furnishings you know the, the parks department the city did a great job of specifying the furniture and mm -hmm. quality stuff so yeah okay where are we going to go now well what do you want to try uh, multi -purpose yeah store? let's go in the multi-purpose I mean, there's just one room here for the staff and true everybody. We, can we can show people yeah all right oh and there's elaine having her lunch hi elaine Good, we're doing a little Facebook live video tour of the building. Guess who's on the video chat with us? Oh. Alexi Torres. Oh, Alexi. Yeah. Oh, miss, miss Alexi. <laughs> I know. I don't know, Alexi, tell us how you're doing sometime. She looks beautiful. She always yes. looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine, for all your work out there. Thank you, Maggie. <clears throat> So this is the multi-purpose room, which is just what it says. You know, it can be used for any number of kinds of events, a flexible space. And one of the things you can you can see here, I think, is that we have this idea that in nice weather that you, you want to be able to open the building up to the outside. So we have some uh, special um, doors here that uh, actually sort of zigzag. Yeah, doors, our accordion so. doors. rolling gates that are down when the building is closed, but you can open them up so you can really have events that kind of flow from inside all the way outside to the plaza. Wonderful. So I personally am looking forward to having Zumba classes, yoga classes, all kinds of workshops and lectures in this space. We'll bring the chairs out, we'll put them away depending on what we're using it for. Um, but. It's so going to be a multi-purpose. Sort of yeah. Roof, yep. Yeah. We're just about done with our tour now, guys. We're back kind of where we started, at the plaza by the bridge. So if you look up through the mesh, you can see the, the uh, sloping roof. So there's solar panels up on the roof. And um, 
as I said, those actually generate enough electricity to provide all the power in the building. Um, we also have uh, what's uh, a pretty unique uh, heating and cooling system that uses um, standing column wells. So most air conditioners and heaters, they like blow the heat and take the heat into the air, which is a kind of noisy and not very efficient way to do it. This system, we have two wells that are 1,500 feet deep. So in the summer, the um, heat pumps take the hot air out of the rooms and they pump it into the groundwater and they pull cooler water up, which keeps uh, the, the temperature um, regulated in a much more efficient way than most air conditioners do. And the reverse happens in winter. So, you know, you can't see it, but there's a lot going on underground here. There's the there's a rainwater tank, there's these standing column wells. Geothermal is probably Geothermal. what people know them most commonly as, right? Yeah. So a lot of stuff. Great. So this, you know, this ought to be one of the greenest buildings in New York City, which is <laughs> totally appropriate for the Bronx River Alliance to occupy Yes, and we're just so thrilled to be in this space, those of us who can be here now. I actually emailed Greg about it last week to say thank you, Greg. It you know, was so many years in the making that we talked about it so much. I think we lost sight of really how wonderful it is to be in a building right by the river in our park. Um, and we want to be able to use this space to really deepen all of our connections to the river and run lots of great programs. We want communities to be able to use this space too. So come and see us in a few months when this all clears up. Greg and I are gonna just wave goodbye. Goodbye. Now comes the fun part. <laughs> Bye.